Welcome to Silver Pros, sponsored by Hero Bullion. I am your host, Silver Dragons, and I'm joined by my co-host, Yankee Stacking. How are you doing tonight, Yankee? I'm doing wonderful, SD. Good to be here with you. Very cool. We're going to be discussing the gold to silver ratio, or better yet, how to conquer the gold to silver ratio. How, man, how cool I, is that? I love that energy, man. Let's conquer it. Yeah, no, I mean, because it's one thing just to understand what it is, how it works, uh, but it's another thing to actually be able to use it to your advantage to end up with more precious metals. Because at the end of the day, you know, we all want to stack and we want to have the biggest stack we can. So obviously you got you to gotta know about the GSR, right? Absolutely. And I think there are different ways that uh, we can make use of the GSR. But before we get into it too much, SD, I think you need to explain what the heck it is. Okay, yeah. So it's the gold to silver ratio or the gold silver ratio. You could say either one. Um, but let me actually pop up on the screen here the ratio. And here we go. This is over on Hero Bullion's website. If you haven't checked them out, uh, definitely do so. They got really great deals on silver and gold. Um, but the ratio I have pulled up here is the one year. So as we can see, it's uh, gone down, it's gone up. Right now, at the moment, it's going up. The okay. gold to silver ratio is basically how many ounces of silver it would take to buy an ounce of gold if you don't factor in any premiums. So oh, right okay. now, it is yeah. around 80. We, I mean, we are right, right in the ballpark of 80. So um, hypothetically, if you had 80 ounces of silver and you sold them, you could buy one ounce of gold. But of course, we all know when you factor in premiums, the numbers are gonna change, right? Okay, so if I have 80 silver eagles and I'm just desiring a gold one ounce eagle, if I ex can I exchange those 80 silver eagles for one one ounce gold eagle if the GSR is 80? Now that's that's kind of the idea, right? That you and and in your in your mind you might think, yeah, I could totally do that, but right. in reality, you're going to have to go to a coin shop um mm -hmm. you're gonna have to contact a bullion dealer someone who's wanting to buy those silver eagles and of course it's not going to be hard to offload those um, but you're mm -hmm. gonna have to cash out right so there's going to be a cash component you sell your silver eagles and then you can buy a gold eagle okay i was going to ask you about that cash has to be involved pretty much always it's very very rare that mm -hmm. a bullion dealer or a coin shop is going to be willing to accept your silver and give you gold without any cash. Now, you might have better luck with a local coin shop uh, because, you know, if you know them, perhaps they would be willing to do something like that. But for the most part, you're not going to be able to. Have you ever heard of anyone doing that? Yeah, actually, I, I have. People have reached out to me. I did a video on this a while back, and people were putting in the comments, Yankee, I've done it. But it's usually, like you said, with a local coin shop dealer that trusts you and and they do it. And I, I scratch my head on that because there not there like sometimes tax implications or, you know, of a business, they have to deal with the inventories and they have to show the sales and the and the purchases. I just don't know if it's really that common. Right. Yeah, I, I don't think it's that common. Um, but if we go back to, you know, what is the gold to silver ratio? I just wanted to point out that right now it's around 80. And this is kind of a, a key point that we're at, uh, which we're going to talk about. But um, if we look at it historically, if we go back to all, we can see it's jumped around quite a bit. I mean, in the late 90s, it went down to the 40s. Uh, Mid-2000s, it was down in the 40s. 2011 went down to the 30s. And uh, just last year, it spiked up to a high of almost 120 ounces of silver, to one ounce of gold so it jumps around a lot and if you play it correctly you can actually use this to your advantage uh, there's different ways to use it though right some people use absolutely. it absolutely some people use it in the physical markets buying and selling and trading constantly flipping back and forth or trying to flip back and forth others use the paper markets how else can we use this gsr to our advantage yeah so for me as a stacker when i look at the gsr I don't necessarily look at it as, you know, what am I going to sell and buy? I look at it as which of the two metals should I buy? So should I buy gold? Should I buy silver? Because as a stacker, for the most part, you're just looking to accumulate more. You want to build your stack. You're not necessarily looking to cash out at any point. So maybe maybe you do that. And 
as as we're going to talk about, it's better to do that at the extremes, uh, you know, at, at right. a dip or at a peak. Uh, but for the most part, when you look at this chart, if the numbers are higher, then it's better to stack silver. If the numbers are lower, then it's better to stack gold. So that's a really basic fundamental understanding of the gold silver ratio. All right. So GSR, when it's high, I should be focusing more on silver yes. or gold. Silver, right? Yep. yep. And yep. when it's low, you should be focusing more on gold as a rule of thumb. Yeah. So my my general rule of thumb is that if the gold to silver ratio is above 80, which we're at 80 right now, right. then I focus most on silver. If it's between 80 and 60, combination of gold and silver. And then, of course, if it goes below 60, focus mostly on gold. Now, this mm. is just what I should be buying. So a lot of people have mm. the same general rule of thumb. And if you keep those numbers in mind, it'll actually help you out when you're stacking. You know, I do know people that play this uh, in the physical markets. Uh, they buy silver and gold and then they make the exchange um, again. A lot of times you have to go through cash and I don't do it for a couple of reasons. One, when I buy silver and gold, I want to hold my silver and gold. I there, I hold them and keep them for similar but slightly different reasons between gold and silver. I don't want to sell my precious metals. Right. But the other reason why is because I'm really concerned about what you lose in the transaction, especially around premiums. Yeah, I mean, obviously you're going to lose premiums one way or the other. Um, because when you when you cash out, clearly you're not going to get the full premium of when you bought something. Uh, for example, I've mm -hmm. got a uh, Philharmonic here, mm -hmm. and uh, beautiful coins, love them from Austria. But if I buy these for three dollars over spot, then I go to cash them out. I'm probably only going to get maybe fifty cents over spot or a dollar mm -hmm. over spot at my local coin shop. So I'm going to lose out on the premium. So if you're always looking to buy and sell and play the ratio that way, it's not going to really work in your favor that much unless you do it at the extremes. If the right. ratio is extremely high, then perhaps you sell your gold and buy silver. If it's extremely low, like back in 2011 when it went down to 30, a lot of people were actually selling their silver to buy gold. Now, the one area that I might do this in, and I do own a little PSLV, uh, is in the papers markets. So you can play this sometimes with SLV, PSLV, and gold, like, like GLD, all right? So I'm not advocating necessarily uh, investing your money in these uh, derivative stocks or commodity stocks, but you got to be careful there. But you, you're less susceptible to that premium loss when you do it in, in, in the papers markets rather than the physical. Yeah. And one thing too, is if you're doing it in the papers markets, um, you know, you could actually not put any more capital in, but only play the ratio right, right. and end up with more money at, at the end of it. Right. Yep. And I think this is really important, especially for people that are new to this concept to not misunderstand what we're talking about here. This is still a long-term move here it's not something you do every week every month even every year it's something right. that takes a while for it to play out yeah uh, i so mean I don't, yeah. for me personally you know i've been stacking for about four years i'm just getting ready to start my fifth year of stacking here and i've never been able to sell my gold or silver to play the ratio that way as for you know when it comes to the physical there was a point last year um, and I'll bring up the chart one more time here where I could have played the ratio. <laughs> and uh, that was, in fact, let's just go to the five year. That was right here. When the GSR went to 120, this would have been a pretty good opportunity to actually sell your gold and buy silver. And some people actually did do that. So I, I could have done it with my Yankee cannon, but dude, I'm telling you right now, I just don't play that game. I, right. I just don't think it's uh it's it's for me. However, I do think it's possible uh, that this could be done effectively again if you have a longer term uh, time horizon. Can I can I share something with you from a historic standpoint to maybe put a finer point on it? Esther? Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm curious, you know, generally speaking, how long are you going to have to wait? Okay. When, until you can convert if that's what people are wanting to do 
Right, right. So let me uh, let me bring up a, an interesting chart that I've been studying. I'm looking back over uh, you know, a period of several decades, back to 1995. And the GSR at that point was over 80. Over the next few years, it dropped dramatically. As you can see there, it went into the 40s. And then after that, there was years worth. We're talking from 1998 all the way up to 2003. Okay, so we're talking five years there where we basically didn't get to that 80 mark sure. uh, until the very end, right? And then after that, it started to decline again. Okay, and then another run up beyond 80. A and few this years was, later. This was a big right? run up. <laughs> this was a big one, yep. And then again, this one only goes out to 2018 or so, right? Sure. So, and, and it dropped. However, between the end of this chart and today, it's been pretty much uh, flat. I'll show you that too uh, in a second. But this one is very, this chart just is very instructive. It shows the type of cyclical nature that can occur and what silver and even gold, but especially silver does when that GSR drops precipitously from 80 yeah okay, so i look yeah right. i just want to say it, it's pretty interesting to think about um when the ratio drops mm -hmm. that's really when silver is going up uh, because exactly. typically silver moves so much faster than gold so mm -hmm. you kind of have to flip it if you look at it from the point of view of silver you kind of need to flip it in your mind when the gold silver ratio is coming down that's when silver is going up and right. vice versa Correct. Let me um, share the other chart. So you can see that it it's pretty flat. It did have that massive spike, right? Okay. You can see it right there in, in the uh, <laughs> during COVID, right? It, right? it jumped way up. But here we are at 80 again, right? So it's been pretty flat. So so here's the deal. I think we're poised, all right, for another drop potentially down into those 40s and 30s of the GSR. This could be an amazing next cyclical bull run. So if we do mm -hmm. have a drop in the gold to silver ratio, then mm -hmm. like we've been talking about, that will be a great opportunity to buy more gold, uh, but also potentially convert some of your silver to gold as well, right? Yes. If this is how you want to play it, that would be the timing. Again, we're talking years here. It could be well, six, eight, ten years potentially. So let me ask you this. When you say we're going to have another one of these cycle reversals, um, I mean, how big could this bull run be? Uh, I mean, you know, it's really hard to predict these things. But if we do look back historically at, say, some of the previous bull runs, how high mm -hmm. could we see silver and gold go? Okay, so you, you want me to get my Yankee crystal ball out, Let's right? Break out the crystal ball, <laughs> Yankee. I want to hear what you have to say. Okay, so this is just for fun, right? Uh, don't hold me to it. But I love history. And if history, you know, is any indicator, we could be into something special coming up here. So let's look at the last two um, uh, precious metal bull runs. Okay. The first one was around recently, uh, was around 1999 to 2011. That was a 12-year bull run for gold. Yeah. Gold was up eight times, eightfold it went up during that 12-year bull run. The next one was 1971 to 1980. That was an eight-year bull run. Right. Gold was up 22x. Wow. Okay. So let's let's do this. And maybe this isn't you know the right move here, but I think it's probably a good idea. What if we just averaged those two bull runs, the eight and the twenty-two? Okay. So. If and and also if we average the years right because it was and a twelve year years. and an eight year so let's just say ten year bull run yeah a ten year bull run on average and fifteen x okay between you know not eight not twenty two fifteen x let's project that out for fun okay okay all right I mean, again this is just for fun but the um, uh, gold bear market bottomed out. Uh, back in January of 2016, it was, I think, uh, uh, $1,040 an ounce for gold. Okay. Wow. Can, can I just say for a second? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I, it's hard for me to imagine buying an ounce of gold for a thousand bucks. I mean, it, it's it's hard for me. Or, you know, I mean. That's what I, that's what I spent for the Yankee Cannon, dude. A thousand dollars an ounce. 
a thousand dollars for one ounce of gold, and now we're looking at around yeah. two thousand. Right. Okay. Okay. But but go ahead. Continue. Okay. So so this is cool. So so if you say 2016 was the bottom, about a thousand bucks an ounce, fifteen times that in ten years, that would mean fifteen thousand dollars an ounce of gold by 2026. <laughs> oh wow! Now, not saying that's going to happen, but right. I think it's somewhat logical, somewhat sensible. I mean, if history repeats in any way you know that could happen but let's bring the ratio in now right the ratio has been as high as what you were saying close to 120 or right. so and it's around 80 now what if the ratio was just 50 to 1 sure. 50 ounces of silver to one ounce of gold that's definitely in the realm of possibility absolutely that gets you to over 300 dollars an ounce for silver that's pretty intense. <laughs> and and, that amazing? and if the ratio went even lower, uh, like yeah. if, if it did what it did back in 2011, I mean, you could be looking at $400 an ounce for silver. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're, 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 we're dreaming here maybe. But guys, you can understand why that might be possible, especially if you look at history. Right. So. And, and back, coming back to the ratio, mm -hmm. you know, I just want to say that from my point of view, whenever I use the gold to silver ratio to decide which precious metal I should be buying, silver or gold, mm -hmm. I typically don't look at just the gold-silver ratio as far as you know what a website will tell you it is, uh, because they're looking at spot price. Whenever I look at the gold to silver ratio, what I like to do is actually factor in the premiums. So... For example, right now, Smart. the gold-silver ratio is about 80 to 1. But if you look at the premiums on silver, which are mm -hmm. higher than gold, it's really closer to 70 to 1 or 75 to 1. So that's, that's another smart. thing you need to factor yeah. in when you're looking at the GSR. Don't just take the spot price, which is what everyone says. You know, oh, gold silver ratio is at 60 or 80 or whatever. Actually do a little bit of work. Find the cheapest silver you can find and also the cheapest gold you can find and come up with your own ratio, which is the real ratio. Because, I mean, the price you pay for metals, that's that's what the price is, right? That's true. That's wise. Factor in that premium. Don't Don't be... Uh, surprised when you go to actually do it so but yeah i think i think this is very instructive i'm i'm hopeful that people will get a lot out of this especially those who have not really thought about the power of the g uh, gsr here absolutely and uh you know if you have any questions feel free to leave those down below in the comment section um and i hope you enjoyed listening today we'll see you next time on silver pros stacked like a pro